Hello there again, internet land. It is the Madcap Gamer with a new playlist on the channel. Uh, I have no idea what to call it yet, but we've got the rules of fun for our board games. Uh, we got Madcap Bat Reps for our battle reports, and now computer games, ah, which are awesome. Don't know what to call it. I'll figure it out before this video goes up, or just ask for suggestions, I guess. Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 is out, and we are all very happy about that. Nothing has been this exciting since Total War Warhammer 2, so we finally got something we play. Personally, I'm not much into Navy battles, but better than not having something from Games Workshop to play. That's new. So, I couldn't quite figure out what I was going to do for you guys, because I know there's been a lot of better testing and games already out so people will have reviewed this up the wazoo and you will already know everything about it and have preview previews of all the different factions and things like that and probably previews of the campaign previews of the battles so what am i going to do well i thought i might help out some players out there with a little issue that i have with games like this, which is I love all the different ways you can play the game all the bits and pieces and the extras that uh, make it what it is I hate the fact that you don't get them when you buy the game but you have to go through and complete so much of this campaign or the couple of the campaigns to unlock everything uh, and that can be a right pain so I thought I'd just tell you how to beat the campaign or at least the AI of this game in any particular situation, I think. Um, it works great for the Imperials, Mechanicus, and Space Marines, I know, because I've been using it this whole campaign. And as you can see, um, I've, I've got everything. All the sectors are mine, um, and the majority of that was using this one particular tactic for every single game. So I thought I'd let you in on it in case you're one of those people that just want to get through the campaign as quickly as possible, beating every fleet that you come up against so you can get all the extras and the add-ons and the, the things that you need to complete campaigns to get. This is the trick that I use. It works every time or I should say most of the time. I'll circle back to why it doesn't work every time. But if you think it's one of the it's one of those Sex Panthers. 50% uh, of the time, it works every time. So I'll show you this particular tactic and we'll get into it. And I've chosen, this is an old save that I had. And you can see I'm totally outnumbered. Uh, 1,300 points to almost 800. So it should be a slog. And even with my tactic that I'm going to show you guys, I suppose I should mention at this stage that you will need a little bit of uh, prep work because for this particular tactic, you need a certain kind of ship. Um, if you get different ones, yeah, it will work, but it won't work as well. I'm sure there's better ships that I could have uh, in order to do this tactic for the revenue that I have in the campaign to spend on this stuff. Okay, so let's get this <laughs> this tactic to work and it turns out that I have a ridiculously perfect map to do this in. So let me run you through it. Um, it's going to work on other maps, so don't be, don't be too put off by how easy this looks at the moment. But basically, you're going to have your big ships, your big cruisers, you're looking for the ones that have torpedoes. So we all know how irritating torpedoes are. Fired at range. And we want these guys to stick out. We don't want to put these guys in clouds or all that sort of stuff, Tem tempting though it may be. Because the clouds are for these guys. All of these escorts that I've got and these other two cruisers are mostly front arc firing close ranges. Now the, the Space Marine cruiser, this guy here, has launch bays for fighters as well, which would be handy to stave off enemy bombing runs. But basically, you want your enemy to sort of come down here chasing these guys that are going to be firing their torpedoes. And as they get close, they're going to get brutalized by 
these fellas hiding in this gas cloud. Now in this particular mission we got lucky and we got given a couple of gas clouds straight off the bat. In fact I'm going to reposition because there's no need to get super duper greedy and get up in everyone's grills right at the front. We want to get more of the corner and more of a defensive position. We should by all means. Now the hidden guys you want to place just in front. Um, not in line with but a little bit ahead of these capital ships. There's two reasons for that. Basically you want your enemy that's coming down to be hit in the side by all of these guys giving them a close-up lance battery or whatever it's going to be. But also with the torpedoes you have to often make tiny little minor adjustments with where they're firing in order to hit the enemy and a lot of the time you can't really maneuver these ships without moving them forward. So you want them to be slightly back so they have room to move forward a little but these guys will still be in the forefront. Basically you're going to use these guys to irritate the enemy, fire torpedoes, get them to launch their fighters, launch their escorts to get down here and stop these guys from firing their torpedoes and they will end up inevitably crossing these fellas who will shoot uh, the bejesus out of them. Now when you've got these guys set up into a cloud bank put them on lock on because that increases their range, these guys too. If you don't start with a gas cloud, that's fine. All you do is you put these guys that would be hiding on silent running and move them up. You can get them to this point, you know, a third of the way up the map, even half of the way up the map if it's going to be tight, but you can do it. Don't bother silent running these guys, okay? Put them where they're going to get up next to the same gas cloud but leave them on where they can be spotted. And at least you know that the enemy is going to be closing in on them and not focused on these other guys that are silent running that can get up closer. Anyway, well, let's get straight into it and see what the effects of this particular tactic are. Well, let's have a look see. Now we've got these defensive areas here, which is part of the reason why I'm so outnumbered because this area is well defended as well but they're stationary and they're not going to come and get us what we want to do is defeat the fleet first once we defeat the fleet we can stand back and take on these guns and we can even evacuate ships that are severely damaged before we get into a fight with these defensive platforms so saves us losing any ships we don't want to with this tactic especially for the campaign, do keep in mind that Spire, this ship here, is of course your commander and the game is over should he die. So even though you are using him for bait, make sure that you keep an eye on him and you get him out of trouble if he's starting to look like he's getting into trouble. Okay, around about here maybe a third of the way down the map is when I usually start harassing people with torpedoes just to get them to get a move on you know sometimes they they might be cheeky and might spread out looking for other ways to attack you and stuff and you want the enemy to be thinking no time we are under fire we want to attack immediately and here come some of his fighters to do just that and that's another good thing of having these guys slightly ahead and hidden in this bank. They will fire on enemy fighters that are incoming. Lend their firepower to it. And you won't have to worry about those fighters anymore. So you can see here me trying to get this Dauntless into a position where his torpedo is actually going to be effective. And having to nudge him up ever so slightly because it just won't work if he doesn't move forward let's lose some torpedoes okay you know it's you're not expected to do much with these torpedoes and damage wise like i said you're just trying to break them up um irritate them make them put on those all ahead fools to get to you as quickly as possible and not think about whether or not they're getting out of line or getting in certain ships less defended than others 
you don't want them thinking about that. You want them to rush forward and not be aware that you're up to something. So, let's speed these guys up. One volley usually is good enough for me, and then I'll wait until they get much closer because that really is going to throw them off if they're just getting into contact range and the torpedoes start flying and they'll have to start breaking up, getting out of the way, worrying about where these tor torpedoes are coming from and that will separate them even further. Around about this time, torpedoes and stuff incoming is when you can get away with a plasma bomb too. And here comes the fire from the cloud. So, those lancers have started to go off the same time that plasma bombs and other things are going off, same time as torpedoes are coming in. You can see one escort down already. A couple of seriously, seriously damaged escorts. That's just going to keep on going. I try and keep my distracting ships um, in position at this point. I don't want to go chasing around those escorts that are taking off and they're pretty damaged. They are not going to be too much trouble. And I want to keep those torpedoes flying. There goes another escort. So, we're going to move up. We're not going to be too distracted by, like I said, his escorts that have taken off. We don't want to do the same thing that they have done and get all broken up. So, we are going to stay much closer to our other flotilla of ships, which is in here. See if we can just get rid of that escort. And we'll take a left here. Give it a bit of a broadside. Plasma bomb, finish it off. All right, now we can start to make a move and take out these capital ships. Or cruisers, they are. Because they're so separated from everyone else, you can really concentrate your fire because you've killed a bunch of their escorts, you've damaged a bunch of their stuff, and set them up to be further apart from each other and be picked off one at a time. Tell my guys to close range, launch their space marines, do some damage. There goes another escort. So you really can see I'm down to two cruisers left in this fight and I have lost zip so far. And I'm outnumbered, don't forget. So this should be a much closer thing than it really is. One cruiser lost, but like I said, I'm outnumbered here, so we're expecting to lose ships, and I would say expecting to lose a lot more ships than we actually have. So, one ship for, I don't even remember how many, but a lot of enemy ships. Let's go get this guy. Mutiny and he's out as well. And as you can see, outnumbered, um, but still, 
tons of my own ships left. And like I said, that works on pretty much every mission. Um, let's work through the whole campaign. It, it's a little dodgy, maybe they'll fix the AI parts of that uh, later on. But like I said, if you're someone who just wants to get through the campaign um, so you can get on to the other things that happen, get all the unlock all that cool stuff, then what's the harm in using something that you know works? I'll finish off these orbital structures just to show that it's not a uh, it's not something that's going to fail if you have to go up against orbital defenses or be outnumbered severely. Um, same tactic will still work every time. This is the point I found through the campaign where make sure you keep an eye on Spire. Because you know, might have been a little bit damaged, a little bit worse for wear after that fleet engagement and you don't want to accidentally uh, get him killed taken on platforms which can be done by anyone cruisers and escorts and stuff should say that I lied before this isn't like the end end of the campaign there will be other battles after this where chaos forces will invade and they'll invade in numbers they'll have like fleet strengths of a thousand over a thousand um, to come and try and take back the sector from you but like I said if you've got this particular tactic you don't even have to match their forces thousand strong for thousand strong you can hold them off with 600 or 800 whatever you like because every map has some gas clouds some might be harder to get to they'll be in the middle of the map they'll be a quarter of the way up the map but you can get to them using you know your silent running and stuff that is the game and that is every game like i said though um there is a little caveat which means that this won't work for every single mission and that is because those of you that are playing the campaign will notice that the missions are split up every time you play a battle it's like randomized between cruiser clash which is what we just saw defeat all the enemy ships and orbital arrays and all that sort of stuff and you win the game and the other half is the capture and control now during the capture and control missions you really can't rely on that particular tactic because if you sit back and have a little ambush waiting for your enemy then he just goes and captures all the locations and then his points go up and he wins the game so you need to move around a little bit more in that instance i've got a sort of a variant on this exactly the same tactic like i said it works um every time in a cruiser clash so i just move the Lance guys and the battery guys slightly ahead and to the side of my irritating torpedo ships but I leave them on silent running just leave them on silent running leave them there moving towards the enemy so like I said 50% of the time it works every time it'll get you through the campaign and you'll get all your extras and stuff like that quickly enough and yeah, so that's my contribution to Battlefleet Armada coming out. Here's how you beat the game and get all the little unlocks that you want to get nice and quick. I hope you liked it. Uh, there'll be more games, uh, probably some more reviews and things rather than me telling you how to beat uh, the game. If I come up with any uh, cool ideas or maybe someone comments with some cool ideas or tactics um, for me to try out, and I'll show you guys how that runs too. But uh, otherwise, keep playing games. See you next time.